Hey guys, we're going to do a quick little video over how to become a better deer hunter in the month of October. Now, the very first thing we're going to be talking about is finalizing the food plots or getting a fell food plot um, corrected and get you guys going in the right direction. Now, we utilize the Nixa Hardware and Seed Company uh, food plot mixes there. They've also they've got the bull, uh, bullseye mix, the buck salad, as well as the deer pot mix that can all be utilized and planted up till middle of October. If you find yourself after the middle of October, go with that cold grazer eye where you can do a layering system. So every month, you know, go in there and either put 50 or 100 pounds um, per half acre of food plot in there. And I think you'll find out that that really works out good in regards to having a great food, food plot for not only your deer, but also other wildlife. So uh, the next um, topic I wanna talk about is the three stages in October there. So early, middle, and late October. So early season and you know, flowing in from uh, late September all the way into that, I'm gonna say that week, week and a half of October, I'm still gonna be hunting soybeans, especially if they were late planted soybeans. And the biggest deal there is you're gonna start seeing a lot of your acorns uh, drop, the white oaks, as you start transitioning into that month of October, but those soybeans will still be a great food source. So if you can find your oak tree at, on a trail that's going out to the soybean field, I think you'll find that as a very good combination set up there depending on the wind. And I think you'll have a pretty rock solid hunt. The next two are going to be uh, isolating water. You know, if you've got any kind of a pond or, uh, you know, even a water tank or a stream getting in there, and you know set your trail camera up see what kind of animals are moving forward uh through there and then get you a good solid game plan uh as it as it goes through and then the very last thing for the early i want to talk about is morning hunts i wouldn't recommend going in there and hunting a morning hunt unless you've got an absolute positive chance at a good sized deer that you know you're not going to bust out of there transition them back I'm going to be hunting, if I'm going to be hunting there, I'm going to hunt between food and bedding. And typically it's only going to be on cold front morning. So, you know, any morning that the previous morning was 60 and I'm seeing the 12 to 15 degree drop there. So it's 45 that next morning. I'm going to go in there and see what can happen there. Um, and then our next uh, part of October is going to be the middle. Uh, before we get to that, we're going to do a quick little video for our sponsor for this week, Brad Hill State Farm out of Monet, Missouri. The State Farm Personal Price Plan helps you create an affordable price just for you. Contact Brad Hill for an auto quote today. All right, guys, moving on to the middle of October. Uh, that's what typically the phrase October lull starts coming into play there. And I think that there's two reasons why there is an October lull. And one of which is a tremendous amount of acorns have, have fallen at this point. If we've got a good acorn near and those deer, they're just not moving. You know, they're not moving at a far distance there. They're up moving, they're feeding, but they're having, they're not having the transition that two or 300 yards is what they would have been, you know, uh, in September and on into that first week in October. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you're not seeing any of your deer on your food plots, transition those cameras, see if you can isolate those over an oak tree. Once you find that oak tree, mark that thing because year by year by year, that should be a repetitive food source for you guys to keep in mind. And maybe next year, even put you a cellular trail camera on there before uh, season. And that way you're ready to go and you can understand when those acorns are dropping. Um, the next one, is just going to be the amount of pressure that uh, an individual is putting on. Now, public land, it's a whole different story. But, you know, if you've got the ability to lessen the pressure on private ground, do so. You know, hunt those nice cold mornings, get in there clean, you know, utilizing your wind and your thermals there. Uh, typically in the mornings, you know, your thermals are going to rise. Your, uh, and in the evenings, they're going to they're gonna drop. So, it's not always that case, but it's a good rule of thumb that I found that, you know, if I'm going to go into a brand brand new area that I don't understand the thermals, that's typically what I'm going to hunt by. And, you know, 
the very last thing is just going to be uh, for the October is late. Late October there, getting into your pre-rut there, those deer are going to start moving, those big mature bucks start moving on those cold front mornings. Uh, you know, last week in October, a great time to, uh, you know, utilize uh, some of those transition stands in the mornings. Um, again, I'm not going to be hunting until it's a nice cold morning or I feel like I've got a big deer in the area and I feel like I can go in there and have a pretty good chance of harvesting him. So, you know, again, always keep your uh, keep in mind your winning your thermals, entry, exit, and during your hunt. And I think you'll find that, that it's a proven success um, going down that direction. So, uh, a couple other things is continuously shooting your bow out there, you know, all the way through season. If you're finding yourself shooting at 20, 30, 40, 50 yards, try to get those targets at 25, 35, 37, 42, et cetera. And figure out what your equipment's going to do you know so if that if that animal's at 37 yards do you feel more comfortable at your 40 pin and you're aiming low or do you put it at 30 and you're aiming high figure that stuff out and that way when you're in that situation you're already proactive and you know exactly where that shot placement needs to be and the very last topic there i want to talk about is just getting your rifles and your muzzleloaders out shooting them right now you know, before that hunt, before that season, uh, it's always great to pull those weapons out of the safe, uh, figure out, you know, are they sided in still or are they good to go? And then as you work in through the season, you'll be at a proactive point where you're able to harvest that deer. And the very last thing is, is you know, get those kiddos involved. If you get the opportunity, um, give the kid, the, you know, just give a kid the opportunity, whether it's a friend, uh, you know, one of your kids, a neighbor, you know, don't hesitate to ask, you know, hey, would you be interested in going deer hunting? You know, get them out there, enjoy nature, and hopefully that you guys can learn from each other. And I think you'll learn a lot about that situation. So I appreciate you guys liking the video. Like always, hopefully you guys are getting out there in nature and best luck on your upcoming hunt.